friends, and welcome back to the Lefty Agenda. I hope everyone is enjoying their summer and not being burnt to crisp by the climate change that is ravaging our planet. This is going to be the second video in a series I'm doing on the Manosphere and online misogynist groups. If you haven't, go check out my first video on the incel movement, but you actually don't need to watch them in order. They're going to be on different topics, so you should be okay to finish this one first if you'd like to, but I'll uh, put a little little link to the, the first one. Men going their own way. That's the name of another branch of the Manosphere that isn't quite as catchy for headlines as incels are. I believe the incel ideology may be more dangerous physically to women, but MGTOW, or MGTOW as it's pronounced, can have some very detrimental societal consequences. And with most things, the general sexism and misogyny will obviously leak over into other places and can also breed a culture of, you know, crime and actual physical violence against women. I did want to have a quick correction from my last video. Um, I, I wanted to address something that was brought up. I was getting quite a bit of comments telling me that I had made a mistake by claiming the majority of incels are white men. I will be attaching an article in the description that states 55% of incels are white, while 45% of incels are made up of other races. I do stand by what I said in that video because the majority of incels do seem to be white, but I do acknowledge that I could have clarified some of the statistics better in that video, so I just wanted to set the record straight and give some more facts and context. Um, yeah, thanks so much and enjoy the rest of the video. Men going their own way, or vol cells as they're also called, are a group of the manosphere that branches off from incel ideology. Vol cell standing for voluntarily celibate, whereas incel stands for involuntary celibate. Where an incel will want to sleep with women by force if necessary, a vol cell has eschewed the pursuit of women altogether. And I know what you're thinking. That's great news. Please don't interact with women ever, please, you fucking weirdo. Um, and while I absolutely agree with that, it can have negative effects on women as well as men, as we'll come to find here. As far as we know, the uh, MGTOW ideology begins in the early 2000s and seems to have been created at le or at least pioneered by two men with the online names of Solaris and Ragnar. The main beliefs of the movement are that women are inferior to men and not only hold them back, but leech off of men at every chance they get. Um, MGTOW.com states that the beliefs go as far back as Beethoven, Galileo, and even Jesus Christ, um, which I think is very ironic considering, like, if you've actually heard what Jesus taught, like, he wasn't sexist. I mean, you could say that he, like, didn't have any sexual encounters with women, but also, you know, it's because he was like the Messiah, <laughs> but that's a topic for another day. Um, some of the discussions that I've ran across on MGTOW gathering places include avoiding marriage as, and always, you know, having a paternity test for your children, avoiding couples because when the woman is mad, they execute the anger through their partners. And there was a post about somebody getting their girlfriend pregnant, and another user, ironically or not, told him to celebrate in a hot tub so there was a chance of a miscarriage. And again, it's all laced in this kind of irony, similar to what we see with like the incel culture. You know, they're never openly up front with anything. It's all laced around this idea of like internet jokes, blah, blah, blah. The idea that women are riding on the coattails of men is quite a funny assumption when you consider that many vol cells will point to innovations made by men and the stereotypes of the stay-at-home housewife to show that women are parasites, although they fail to realize that men created the society that normalizes the suppression of women. Similarly to incels I spoke about in my last video, they scapegoat many of the issues modern men face onto women. A common contradiction that appears in the manosphere but is illustrated the best in the MGTOW movement is that for a group of entirely men, nearly the entirety of their conversation revolves around women. Although I will state that there are some forums that are better than others, just offering general life advice for men, um, different, you know, what techniques to better what you're eating and things like that. 
And that's not a bad thing. It's just in the context of what they're saying and how they're implying it, it becomes toxic. But on many forums, the main main discussion is women and how they are the cause of all of the issues that these men are facing. And I suppose you could tie that to the beliefs that, you know, women are the cause of all the issues, but nobody is forcing them to post nonstop about women and have these sexist beliefs. If you were really going your own way, wouldn't you not want to give women another thought for your entire life unless you absolutely had to? And that perfectly leads me into my next part, which is what happens when vol cells have to interact with women. MGTOW and many other groups of people reacted negatively to the hashtag MeToo movement, which was a worldwide movement of women standing up and telling their stories of sexual assault and rape. Many of the same arguments from MGTOW to right-wing pundits to the ex-president of the United States, Donald Trump, stating that women were just liars looking for their 15 minutes of fame, trying to gain clout. Obviously, I can't make the claim that all sexual assault allegations are legitimate, but I will also attach an article in the description that suggests that the false allegation narrative is often overinflated due to inconsistent definitions and a weak understanding of sexual assault. There are plenty of studies out there about how sexual assault allegations are often not false, and you can look it up on your own time. This type of fear-mongering from the right and the manosphere not only dug its way into the minds and individuals in these groups, but also the minds of the general public altogether. Um, all of this negativity kind of created the MGTOW phrase, avoid women at all costs. And again, referencing the book Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. An orthopedic surgeon in Chicago told the New York Times that he had ceased to be alone with female colleagues because of his fear for his job and his livelihood. An event manager in Austin, Texas, stopped having regular meetings with a consultant, saying it was inappropriate for a married man to have lunch with a single woman, even though the consultant stated she wasn't interested in him romantically at all. The World Economic Forum in Davos in 2019 told journalists they were no longer mentoring women as a result of the Me Too era. Former Vice President Mike Pence refuses to eat lunch alone with anyone who is not his wife, which of course in a high-level political office, many meetings are conducted over a meal. Note this may be a combination of his anti-Me anti Too movement sentiments and religious reasons as well, but it's likely it's kind of a crossover between both. If it's not clear from those examples, women are missing out on job opportunities, mentorship, and in some instances their careers or potential careers because of men who are too afraid to be alone with a woman. This might be a wild idea, but maybe if you don't sexually harass or assault a woman, she won't bring up any allegations of sexual harassment or assault against you. I can promise that the overwhelming majority of women are not going to accuse you of anything that you did not do, and it's not fair to limit them because of one's sexist fears. What kind of fear can lead a person to boycott nearly 50% of the population? And also, why? These questions are key to understanding why MGTOW is what it is. As an example, an argument that comes up in many anti-women and gynocentric society conversations are things like the court system and how it's biased against men. When it comes to custody battles for children and kind of the date the amount of time that's spent and things like that. And while I agree there are probably cases that have had a bias against the father, statistics show that in 91% of custody cases they're decided outside of court, which means the court can only be biased against men 9% of the time in custody cases. Not quite the cultural battle that these men are making it out to be. And this brings me to a larger point, which is disinformation about feminism and what women really want. I believe that MGTOW ideology views feminism as too dangerous because it makes women bloodthirsty against men, and that's just not true. The majority of feminists don't want bad things to happen to normal men because most feminists realize that the standards set for men and women are also hurting men and keeping us from being able to express ourselves fully. Feminism is 
more about equality if you give women more rights in you know the workforce if you make women paid the same amount as men giving them more opportunities then that means that there's going to be less alimony payments so when it comes down to it it really works in everybody's favor but according to the right and most right-wing pundits they would love for you to believe that feminists are trying to take your kids away make you have to change what you like to be more feminine make you become gay so that you can never look at a woman again and that's just not true it's fear-mongering and it's dangerous. My suggestion is to actually talk to a feminist or to feminists that you may know. Like, if you're anti-feminist, go and sit down and talk about their experiences. And I can almost guarantee that you'll come out of the conversation with more respect for the feminist movement and women in general. Don't believe what you hear from, you know, these talking heads. They're They're trying to lie to you. They're trying to get you riled up against this group. And it's... There's nothing to be riled up about. The majority of feminists don't want bad things to happen to you. And I'd like to end the video with a quote from a rapper and a political activist named Propaganda. I will also link his music because he is amazing. Um, Equality is oppression if all you know is privilege. And yeah, that's all that I have for this video. Um, thank you so much for sticking to the end. A little bit of a shorter video than like my last couple ones, but um, you know, please give the video a like, comment if you have any uh, any thoughts, and you know, subscribe to subscribe to uh, the video, my my YouTube channel, of course. And also, please check out my podcast. It's called Remarks. Me and a really good friend of mine named Phoebe are going through and just having some longer form content, discussing issues, making jokes, doing different things. It's a little bit more relaxed and less scripted than my videos are. So definitely give that a listen and I will catch y'all in the next video.